three, two, one. Roll right up right track way. Hurts and shoots, he scores! Mike check four. Number two, number two RL. Three, take three. Ready three. Ready Number four, stay with the defender. 30 blue. Ready, Ready, Ready four. Way back, turn the wall after all. That ball is out of here! Oh, sucker! Have a good one, everybody. Shooting to Score is brought to you by Hall Pass Media and Hall Pass Studios. Hall Pass Media is a full service marketing agency that specializes in brand consulting, event management, digital marketing, and creative design. Hall Pass Media has a wide range of clients and partners that include the NBA Summer League, the NBA Coaches Association, and the Basketball Tournament. For more information, please visit hallpassnetwork.com. This episode is also brought to you by Sports Business Classroom an immersive sports business training and educational experience unlike any other. Registration for this program is now open. The experience is a one-of-a-kind learning opportunity for anyone interested in the sports industry, specifically the business of basketball. For media professionals, this is a unique opportunity to enhance your sports business intellect and network with some of the brightest minds in the field. If you dream of one day landing a job in sports or wish to advance in your career, this program will, will allow you to show the right people that you have what it takes. Sports Business Classroom combines the best of all worlds into a single package. It's great academics, it's hand-on experience, and immersion at the Las Vegas Summer League. You can check out all the details for the 2020 program at sportsbusinessclassroom.com. And if you're at all interested, make sure to apply as soon as possible as this program will fill up. Again, the URL is www.sportsbusinessclassroom.com. I'm very excited to bring you this week's episode of Shooting to Score, as it was one of my favorites so far. I got the chance to talk to recently hired Pittsburgh Pirates content creator Josh Lavalley about a ton of different things in the production world. Josh has primarily worked as a photographer since getting into the production industry eight years ago. In that time, he shot for all the major U.S. sports leagues, dozens if not hundreds of college athletic programs, and covered sports ranging from gymnastics to ping pong. With very little background in sports photography, this interview was a real treat for me as I got to learn a ton. He gave nugget after nugget of advice for anyone in the early stages of their sports creative career. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Josh Lavalley. Well, welcome, Josh. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Max. Thanks for having me, man. Sweet. Excited to get into some stuff with you here. Likewise. All right. Well, I want to start out um, before we kind of go into your background and, and everything that you do uh, is just give us a memorable moment from your career. It doesn't have to be, you know, the peak, uh, something the most amazing that happened, but just something to you that sticks out as, as something, you know, one of the most memorable moments so far. I think, um, I mean, it kind of goes with the peak a little bit, uh, being able to shoot an actual professional, full uh, top of the line professional sport. Um, I got lucky enough to land a position with the MLB um, down in San Diego with the Padres, covering for them, and um, just being able to be there and, and and get a get a shot that was actually used that very first day on their social platform. So um, that was probably the thing that like kickstarted my drive to want to get to where I'm going. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, then, yeah, I just want to learn a little more about you here. And, um, you know, we've worked together once, so don't know you that that well. But um, where did you get your start kind of in the sports production world? Uh, back to the MLB again, but pr mm -hmm. prior to that, um, I had a good buddy, and uh, obviously, too, my my mom is a, a is an art teacher, photography teacher, uh, yearbook, that kind of stuff, seventh eighth grade. Um, so she kind of instilled a creative gene in me. But mm -hmm. um, a pair of my two best friends are actually brothers, um, nine years apart, and so the older one said to me when I was kind of in the middle of like trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life now that I had kind of come back from college, didn't really have a path on like what I wanted to do. Um, he, I, he goes, Hey man, you should just start shooting, start shooting weddings and start doing that kind of stuff. And I was like, dude, I don't have enough coin to like get a camera. And he was like, well, what do you need? And I was like, well, it's this camera. It's a Canon 70 D it's a kit, you know, with the bag it comes with SD cards, got all this stuff. And he's like, all right, how much is that? I was like two grand price me a check. I go pick it up. Three weddings later, I pay him back, and I've been kind of doing this ever since. So um, I think that's kind of where the start really kind of mm -hmm. happened. And then I was lucky enough to have a minor league baseball team in my backyard. So just started shooting, um, you know, in my free time with them. And, and from there, um, you know, built a, 
build a portfolio and and got a lucky break with uh, MLB again. Another help assist with from my from my parents. My dad actually works in sales and marketing, and so he was at a convention, ran into some people from MLB, and they're like, "Hey, they're looking for content creators, photographers for this new startup, um, which is now the live content creators are." MLB LCC group that they'd use when I was there was the MLB RTC, which is real time correspondent. And so found that out and, uh, applied, got a call back in, like a week later and, you know, been shooting professionally, I would say ever since. So that's kind of the jumping off point, if you will. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I want to just go back and kind of go through your career a little bit step by step and just find out some of the um, different things you've done, different things you've learned along the way, sure. um, kind of help other people out. So going back, you bought that kit lens. I mean, how or kit um, camera kit, you know, how long ago is that? What are we, what are we talking? Eight years. I'm okay. 29 now about to turn 30 mm -hmm. next month um, in May. So um, eight years, 20, 20, I think it was 20, almost, almost 2000. 12, something like okay. that. Um, when I started, um, yeah, I mean, technology's come a long way from, right. from them. I mean, having that Canon 7D was 70 D was great because mm -hmm. it was great for, for photo to like help me learn, mm -hmm. really dive into that. But the premise of why I started was to shoot more video based things. Okay. I was kind of leaning into the fact that, um, that I could do both with a camera and kind of started to realize the the ability or the the need for uh both mediums in in a career yeah and i mean right around like 2010 ish 2009 was when the dslr craze kind of boomed and began so you were getting in you know relatively early on that on the ability to do photo and video all with one you know pretty relatively affordable camera mm -hmm, exactly and I think also having gone to college, I, I went to college for, I, I was lucky enough to play um, Division One soccer. So I went yeah. to the University of Dayton my freshman year uh, in school, played there. I was a goalkeeper, so obviously only one person can play at a time. Um, wasn't getting the playing time that I, I thought I was uh, capable of. So I transferred to a school called Quinnipiac University, which probably not a lot of people have heard. It's another D1, small D1 school in Hamden, Connecticut. Um, but when I transferred, which kind of was serendipitous on like how this all kind of got kickstarted too, um, c things kind of lined up correctly with like how things are in life in general. Um, but when I transferred, I went from being a sports management major. And when they transferred me over, it was too late in the window to get me into my business classes. So they had to put me in film. And they're like, don't worry about it. We'll flip you to your business classes in two weeks. And two weeks came and went. And I just kept going with film. Going. So after all that, you know, I come back, find out a little bit more about my dad's own history. And he was a camera operator for NBC, worked on like Wheel of Fortune and stuff. So it's oh, kind cool. of like all been in there. Um, but having learned um, that and, and been was given in college, you know, DSLRs to go and make films and take photos and cover sports and different things like that, kind of like already set the groundwork for like what I wanted to do it was just like me want coming back from school to be like, all right, this is going to be a career. So you said you started out shooting weddings or your goal, you know, was to begin shooting weddings, but you majored or originally majored in sports management was the goal at, at, at any time after you transferred to work in sports or did that just kind of be a, a you know, a cookie over here that you ended up going getting? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. I, um, I started in sports management because I wanted to be I wanted to work in the front office. I wanted to be in general manager's role or have something to do with like how the structure of a more more so pro baseball team was put together. And so um, that had always been there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had I've I've loved sports since I was I don't know, you know, whoever remembers that really, but um, I've always loved sports and so actually when I came back um, there was a period in time where I came back one summer, lucky enough to land um, like a, a webmaster behind the scenes kind of photography, videography role with a, a practical special effects company in North Hollywood where they actually like blew, you know, blew up cars and made it look like it's raining and like all the cool stuff that you like you don't normally think of when you're watching 
you know, a movie or a commercial or a TV show or whatever. Like we did that. And so I was more, I was the one who ran their website for them. I didn't have any knowledge in it. They just, they needed somebody kind of thing. And I had a, a connection with a good buddy from, or a buddy of mine that I ran into at the bank actually at the time. Um, his, this is a funny one. His ex stepmom's new husband's company. <laughs> I'll say that again. Ex stepmom's new husband's company. Yeah. Wow. So I'm surprised uh, you remember that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was like you you don't get that very often where right. like, you know, it's his dad's second ex-wife and his new it's yeah. It's a, yeah. it's all kinds of weird. <laughs> but um he was leaving his job. He was like you can take it. Like there's no interview process. Just jump in there and do it and it kind of like again set set up for the next thing to be like, "Hey, this is the path that I can see, but having checked off the box with doing film and coming back and trying to work in the film mm-hmm. industry, I knew that like after a f- you know a few months, I was like, this isn't for me. And so coming back out of that, getting into weddings, but always still having that little tick in the back being like, Hey, you mm-hmm. should go shoot sports. You should go do it. And so, yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right with um, the groundwork was already laid with me being in sports management and then having to transfer and get put into film and it kind of just all came together. That's great. I mean, you said you had a minor league baseball team kind of in your backyard Mm -hmm. and that was able to help you out. What was that? How did you get involved with them? So, um, the, the ranch Cucamonga quakes for anybody who doesn't know where that is, it's about 45 miles east of Los Angeles. Like if you're going on your way to Palm Springs, you'll go right by it kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, Ranch Cucamonga, you, if you've ever seen the movie Friday, you're going to remember that name of that city or Workaholics. They're set there, so um, there's some kind of clues on where that is. But, um, yeah, I, I, I had gone to them being like, what can I do? How can I get involved? Is there any positions available? And they um, actually gave me a position as a camera operator for games, um, and then in my, in the other time when I wasn't working those certain games that I was given, I asked if I could come shoot photos. And so their team photographer came over and, you know, was nice enough to show me different things of like, what are you looking for? Those types, you know, what angles you're trying to get, what kind of story you're trying to tell, kind of start those conversations. And I already kind of had that thought process from film, like, you're trying to tell a story when you're when you know when you're making a, a short or you're trying to shoot a film or, or or TV show or whatever you're trying to do. Like there's there's you know a middle or a beginning, middle, and end, and so that was already kind of put into my into my brain on like what I'm trying to cover. And but then adding my own flavor onto different shots or whatever it may be as I see fit. Now me being an athlete before, I kind of felt I had a little bit of an edge because. I could anticipate when things were going to happen just because I was, you know, sometimes put in those positions in high school. You know, I was a four sport guy. Like I played baseball, I played soccer, played basketball, played football, like those types of things. So anticipating and like, if it's a three, one count, like I know more or less like where the balls may be pitched or Mm -hmm. anticipate, okay, it's going to be hit to the left side or, or those small minute things. yeah. Yeah. That you, as a, a normal spectator, like you don't normally, you, or you wouldn't need to think of. And so mm-hmm. me putting myself into those positions to be like, all right, I, I'm just going to focus on the third baseman right here. And then it gets hit to them and you get a shot. So that's kind of where that kind of happened. And they saw it in me early, the team photographer for, um, for the, for the quakes. So they kind of helped nurture the interest even more. Mm-hmm couple questions there so i mean we can go into that a little bit how uh what you're just talking about about knowing the sport how important of a factor is that do you think for a photographer covering a sport and are there sports that you don't necessarily know as much about and do you notice that oh oh that's i'll go the second part absolutely i mean i just shot gymnastics this this last year and uh never done that before. So understanding how a meet works and like what the rotation is for teams and what's the best angles for different, you know, the different events that are going on, like all that's a learning curve. If you've never done it before now, 
going back to the first question, uh, I mean, absolutely does um, knowing or having the ability to anticipate influence what kind of shots you get. So mm-hmm. if you um, if you've, you've never covered anything, I mean, we've all been in the different situations in our creative careers where we'll see how this goes, you know, kind of thing. Um, but like our experiences help that. So having shot baseball for a really long time, you know, to anticipate that the next, the next thing I ended up shooting was like football and, and, and figuring out, you know, uh, uh, you know, different tricks either from talking to other photographers on the sidelines or, um, those types of things. Cause in football, there's a whole different, um, ideology in terms of how you cover it and where you need to be for different things. So, um, I think leaning in on your experiences and, and anticipating like as an, as a, me as an athlete, like helped me get mm-hmm. to the next step mm-hmm. of, of my, of my position, if my okay. opportunities, those types of things. Cool. So when you cover those different sports, whether it's something that you're super familiar with or something that you're not, what's your preparation process like for those? I typically, because I shoot for the for the teams, either the home or away team, whether whatever sport it is, that's just how I've been able to build my business or my previous business, I should say. Um, I would just ask them what they're looking for. Most 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 of the time, I'm I'm shooting to um, assist with social like social platform posting, different things like that. So they all have different ways of starting a game, of showing up with a team arriving or the team's getting ready or, you know, whoever the the starting pitcher is that day or whoever's in goal, if it's hockey or or soccer, you know, different things like that. So um, my prep starts by one understanding and and knowing who the big guys are or big girl or, or big names on either team. Um, knowing what the client is looking for um obviously making sure that all my gear is is packed nicely clean the night before batteries are charged i don't know how many times i've gotten to somewhere and i have that little panic in the back of my head that go did i charge every single battery i'm not sure and so um just making sure that those things are all checked off to like set yourself up for success is like Mm -hmm. huge um and then just you know, letting your your skill set just kind of take the take the forefront when you get there. Like they ch- they hired you for a reason, so your preparation is a reflection of that. Do you have a process or a step by step chart or anything that you use for preparing your equipment the night before? Not uh, typically. Um, more often than not, in recent years, I've found that I've gone from one gig to the next, um, mm-hmm. either in succession of days or whatever that is. Um, where it's the same gear all the time, take it out, clean it, put it back, clean it, put it back. Same thing over and over again. So, um, I, I run with two camera bodies. I run with basically a 24 to 70, I mean, 24 to like 400 zooms all the way up with a few primes in there that I I know that I, I like to have more gear than not enough. I know a lot of people like try to travel light and, um, I would just rather be able to get there and and go. Dang, I wish I had you know an 85 right now or something like that. And so, um, you know, I've just I don't know I don't know where that came from. No one's ever told me like, oh yeah, you should really take everything. But um, I I just don't want to not have something mm-hmm. to like be able to create like at least one image from. So. So you've covered a lot of different sports. Can you go through just a few of, or I guess as many as you can remember, just the different sports that you've, uh, you've covered. Cause I feel yeah. like I see you post a different event or something every single day. Yeah. I, um, I, I've been, I, I, I figured out early on, um, in, in trying to advance in my career, like, cause everybody wants to work for the home teams that are in the area. Um, and I figured out like in college, especially college sports, like there's, there's teams traveling here all the time. And so reaching out to them and seeing what they need, you know, my, one of my biggest clients was Oklahoma, like working with university of Oklahoma. And so they come out here and they're, they're really good at like gymnastics. Like we had talked about before. So shooting gymnastics for them, shooting softball, um, shooting volleyball, tennis. Um, I've, you know, baseball, hockey, football, basketball, 
I, I've shot all those. Um, what else is some extru- I've shot I've shot ping pong before. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> golf. So there's there's been a lot of uh, different sports and they all kind of mesh together in terms of like angles and stuff. But the and I, back to the anticipation like positioning thing. Like if you've never played that sport or, or covered it before, like trying to figure out and make good images out of it is a little bit of a learning curve. Okay. Um, going through your career then a little bit, uh, as we kind of touched on the minor league baseball part, uh, what, you know, walk us through then to, to where you are now and, and where you're going to be, I guess, once everything goes back to normal. Yeah. Um, so from the MLB, um, RTC program, they at the time were running NHL's media. So MLB Bam, or ML BAM, as everybody knows, MLB advanced media was running NHL and then NHL started a program doing that as well. And prior to me getting the job with MLB, I had a, um, a camera operating job with the Anaheim ducks. So I already had kind of an in there. And so when the position came up with the NHL, they reached out to my superiors and were like, Hey, Josh can, Josh is definitely capable of doing this and interested. Why don't you see if he's available? So basically from MLB, I went right into NHL and um, from there, that's kind of when the um, figuring out that you can talk to the opposing teams that are coming into Los Angeles, um, you know, all kicked off with, especially with um, NCAA stuff. And so just started sending emails. Like I'm a big component on, I, I learned early that no is not a no, it's a not right now. So even if you talk to somebody you know, today, six months from now, you know, the opportunity could be there to work with them. So um, I started that process, which actually helped me with becoming really busy and kind of starting the snowball effect of like working every single day, which is like the biggest thing when it comes to freelancing. And so from there, just, you know, kept my ears to the ground on like what other, other opportunities were there. And then the NFL started their LCC program. And um, this last year, or last two years, I was a was a backup as like basically covered more like um, social events and different things like that for the NFL in Los Angeles. And then I ended up covering both the Rams and Chargers this last year. So um, now, as you said, after all of this is done, um, I this this at the 2020 hit. And I was looking for like the next challenge. So I was looking for something that was more free time, like full time. I mean, I love freelancing. Don't get me wrong. Like that's how we met, um, was able to connect through the Slack channels and different things that we have. And so, um, honestly, like that's been really great about like being able to network and connect with different people like doing that. But I was looking for something like where I could like be like, involved like really dig my teeth in and like really have an impact day in and day out and help build a culture around a team or help an identity in some sense like there was just a bigger calling that was coming for me and so i took three days i sent probably 350 emails to every d1 school every nhl team nba nfl mlb everybody and I got like I got like a lot of response back, but they all started with the word unfortunately, which is like <laughs> unfortunately we don't have anything right now. Unfortunately, you know, your stuff's great, but like we unfortunately we don't have it. And so I had a relationship with my now boss at the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, and he emailed me back and he said, um, hey, we have this freelance opportunity. We're wanting to start to build a creative team that's gonna be close in resemblance to like how NFL or not NFL, uh, NCAA college football schools are. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's a, that's a big undertaking. I mean, they have, they have the ability to have, you know, 20 kids interns and, right. and all that stuff. And so I was like, I, I'm an, I'm looking forward to it. Let's try it. And he was like, it's an opportunity at spring training, come down for a month, you know, we'll take care of everything, all that good stuff. So I went down there for a month, about two and a week, two and a half weeks go by. They go, hey, would you mind staying the entire spring training? I was like, sure, no problem. Two weeks go by. Hey, what do you think of Pittsburgh? I like it. Two weeks go by. Hey, do you want a job in Pittsburgh? I was like, yeah, let's do it. So that all happened like right before um, 
you know, the shutdown happened with coronavirus. Everybody went their separate ways back home. Um, the original plan was for me to come home, get my stuff, and then go back out to Pittsburgh and get set up. But, you know, COVID-19 happens, mm-hmm. and the safety is the most important thing. So right. now um, I'm just on on hold, waiting. I, I'm officially a Pittsburgh Pirate employee, so in a time, um, you know, that is it's rough for a lot of my freelance friends, like, you know, they need anything let me know kind of thing but mm-hmm. um it was it was kind of a blessing at the same time of like when things were able to all happen so cool that's awesome great i mean great story there for, for getting involved <laughs> and getting started and getting from you know where you were to where you are now yeah i want to want to touch on some of the one of the things that you've kind of been harping on is that's that you you reached out to so many different people whether it was for your get into a present role or for freelance opportunities with opposing teams or away teams, uh, you know, when you were, when you're doing other stuff, how do you find out who to contact? What are the resources you use for that? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, to get, to get their contact information, that type of stuff. Yeah. So colleges is a little, for me, it was a little easier. Um, my dad works in sales. I've worked in sales for a long time. And so he has to cold call. It's kind of the same kind of concept in a way. Um, and that's, that's something that I was instilled on early that like, if you don't ask, you don't get kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so with colleges, um, I I went to their SIDs, other sports information directors, um, was able to find that in their staff directories on their websites, on the school web or on the athletic websites and, um, just sent them an email. Just was like, you probably don't know who I am, but this is what I do. Here's my portfolio. Here's some of the people I've worked with. Um, and that took time to like get there and build that portfolio. But those opportunities that I had when I did shoot, I was shooting both of the teams, you know, or both of whatever the event was. I was covering both. So if there was good light that was uh, the other team that I wasn't covering, like I still took the shot so i could still put it in the portfolio that ultimately was what kind of got me where i'm at you know so um i i just i just i went i searched if if they didn't if i didn't they didn't know if they didn't know um if they didn't have something for me i said who who else could i contact Mm -hmm. within your team or like what team needs help or if there's any of a team that's coming here and so on and so forth because the SIDs, especially for colleges, are there to specifically take care of their two to three teams that they have or sports that they have to cover. That's it. And then you go up higher up the chain, you got your directors and everything like that, and they're covering everybody. And so they're not going to know what each team needs or what sport needs or whatever it else because they're trying to cover everything. So I just went directly to the source, asked the question. If it was a no, it was not a no. In, end of discussion, it was we'll talk in another week or two or mm-hmm. a couple or month or six months or a year or whatever. And that's, that's just how I, I went through that. And so having the ability to, um, had the job with MLB, I had to communicate with all of the social media, uh, managers, um, through that. And so I was able to keep those contacts as well and then just reach out and so on and so forth. So it's been, um, a lot of people I know a lot of people's names and they probably have heard of me in one way or another just because of how many times I've sent emails to different people. But like I said, if you don't ask, you don't get. And it's it's not um, it's not that you're trying to come off as like pushy or like I like I need a job, but it's like, hey, no, I'm I'm I, I'm good at what I can do. I think I can add value to what you guys are trying to accomplish. That's certainly not a bad thing, having your name known around the uh, the industry that you work in. I uh, wanted to go into something there that you touched on and, and how you think you got a lot of your jobs was your portfolio. Can you give some advice on on building your portfolio? And I, I think the thing that I'm curious about um, just off the get-go is, did you include photo and video in there or was it just photo? Was it be just video? Yeah, no, it was, it was a little bit of both. I, okay. I kind of kept my video portfolio small. Um, I think it was probably more so because at the time of the last couple of years, I've been mainly doing more photo based stuff. Um, so the photo as and obviously you're going to shoot more photos. You just have a bigger catalog um, to use. So 
There's a little bit of both. I just took my best work and put it in three different videos on my website, and that's just how I built the portfolio on that side of things. I've never really made a demo reel. Um, I just haven't done that. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, the, that's like huge when it comes to like you're only you're specifically going for video roles. Um, but that's just I, I've been more so like photos at the front. I'm kind of more of a content creator more than um, like videographer <clears throat> excuse me that kind of thing so when i built the portfolio i was building it to be my to show off my style of like my my um, extension of like my personality so my personality is a lot of like contrast dark colors um, a lot of like moody lighting i like to make the athletes look bigger than life or like badass you know like like they're 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 superheroes in in my eyes for those reasons. Like, not to uh, put them up on a pedestal, but just 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 I'm trying to create as cool images as possible. And so um, I was able to get a lot of work through that. Um, a lot of my stuff is kind of like dramatic, as I was saying. So mm-hmm. building it out was just like an extension of like who I am. So did yeah. you know? when you started getting into photography, that that dramatic sense was your, you know, what you brought to the table or did it take you a while to kind of figure that out and develop that? I think it took, it took me a little while um, because I didn't want to feel like I was copying anybody. I wanted mm-hmm. to have my own like signature of like my editing style. Cause obviously most of the photo, uh, I mean, all of the photos that you see aren't exactly like that coming out of camera like there's like tweaks and things that we all do as photographers um unless you're typically shooting for a wire you pretty much are just sharpening and making sure the white balance is correct but um you know you're just trying to set it up to be to have a team or somebody hire you that goes yes that matches what we're doing Mm -hmm. this will fit so having your own style that um that works well with multiple uh, mediums or multiple out, you know, teams um, that kind of was able to set up for me to, to go, yep, this is, this is exactly, this is me, this is my style and this is what's going to go for it. So I had, I had a bunch of different like editing styles. I was like, uh-huh. Oh, I'm going to be kind of faded and like show like, you know, um, like there's a, like the film over the top of it or like my shadows are going to be like wide open or, you know, like I'm not going to do anything to the photo. I'm going to be a little more saturated. Like I went through like different stages of, of editing and like figuring out what my, my uh, my photo look was gonna look like, but I never really changed my like photo, like how I took photos, mm-hmm. like the type of light that I looked right. for and like uh, composition and and just that kind of stuff. I think that kind of led me into this area though, because I looked for dramatic lighting. I looked for um, the light to 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 frame somebody or put somebody to the left of the camera or you know different things like that. So I think I think they both went hand in hand. Cool. That's, that's great insight right there. I mean, that's something that I've never really taken into account for. Um, I haven't done a ton of sports photography, so, um, pretty, pretty interesting to hear, hear you talk about that stuff. Uh, when I guess we can go in from that to your post-production process. I mean, what's that look like on a game day? Uh, for instance, I, I'm not a big, I'm not a big preset guy. Like when it comes to my post-production stuff, I like to be able to have the freedom to adjust everything. Um, my reasoning on that is, um, I, I typically have a starting base. Like I know the different contrasts or, you know, highlight or, or, um, mm. shadows or anything like that, that I want to start at, but I want, it, it really depends on time of day, what side of the field I'm shooting on, if it's indoors, those types of things. So from, from that point of view, my post production is typically, I would say, maybe a little bit longer than some people, but that's just my style. I kind of go, it's social, typically that I'm shooting for, so it's like we can wait an extra minute, but that's not necessarily the world that we live in right now, right? Like we want to get things out quick. So, my process, if I if I was shooting for NFL, like we had to do, um, I had to do for NFL like LCC stuff, shooting for the Chargers and the Rams, I would literally have my Sometimes I'd have my computer literally on the field with me 
and I'd run to and from because we didn't have card we didn't have card runners we didn't have an editor mm-hmm. like it was us so um, taking it out there having things set up already that I send them to my phone or I send them straight off my computer to you know the clients or the the teams or whatever it may be um, that process took a little longer because I wanted to make sure that it was it was correct. Like I wanted to make sure the lighting and everything was dialed in. And so I just, I don't like, I don't like to work, work with presets. So like, it just depends on, um, I think the photographer, right. but I also use Lightroom. I don't really use Photoshop at all. Okay. Uh, Photoshop is really for me just to correct blemishes or, or, uh, you know, if a person's hair is not necessarily perfect or in a certain spot or whatever, um, but other than that, I'm a big like realist person. Like I how how it how I shot it is what it looks like kind of thing. So um, that's kind of the post production stuff. Okay. So just real quick, uh, you can touch on it. You kind of touched on it a little there, but like, what's that process looking like? Are you dumping photos? You mentioned dumping them to your laptop. Are there ever a times when you just dump them straight from the camera to your phone? Do a little touch up on the Lightroom mobile app and then send them off. Yeah. So we. On the sidelines, we use, um, I had a CF card reader because I use a 1DX Mark II and those are the bigger uh, cards. So basically what I would do is if I got a good sequence, I would plug it straight from camera. I'd take it out of the camera, put it right into my phone. It was an attachment um, into the USB-C and go through and pick the images. And typically if I was working with a team, um, we'd, we'd go into Slack that we, that's what we were using and you just upload straight to Slack. And I would usually yeah. upload those raw and not edited. I'd go back later at halftime or at a, at a, at a quarter break or something. If I had a few seconds to go in there and like really edit them and then send them on their way. But as we talked about before, it's social, like they want things like quick. So, um, it, working with teams that have editors or a team of editors, graphic designers, those things on hand is like huge for photographers because we send them straight in. They already have their presets. The Rams especially had their own style, like their own look on all their images, all their photos. So it then never looked out of brand. Um, so when it comes though for like like myself, it's it's a different process. Like I made sure right. I edit all my own stuff as we had talked about before. But I make sure that like I can tweak all those fine tweaks and make sure that it's a, a good image in my eyes. So um, but on the field, it's you're trying to get these out as fast as possible. Yeah. Any advice for that, for getting them out as fast as possible? Um, honestly, invest in hot spots. I think that's that's probably the biggest thing when it comes it's to when you're in, that's, on that's yeah, great. like on location. Like, mm-hmm. um, if you're gonna do it, I mean, some of these phone plans now. I I mean, if you're if you're working for a team, like they're gonna they're gonna make sure that you're that your, your connectability is like top notch. Like you're not going to ever have trouble like sending things or anything like that. But if we're going to all these different buildings and there's not right now, but there's not a hundred, you know, hundred thousand people yeah, yeah, yeah. in these places, but you go into these buildings and they're all using cell phones, regardless mm-hmm. if you have great Wi-Fi in there or not, there's still going to be some lag. So, um, I think just making sure that a good Wi-Fi is available um, invest in hotspots if need be, or ask the clients that you're working with if they've got hotspots for you. If there's ever connect, you know, connectability problems or anything like that. And um, yeah, I think I think just making sure you got good service on the field is like huge. Okay, so I'm gonna jump around here a little bit to something that you've kind of touched on throughout, uh, and I want to get some clarification from you here. So these. Uh, like LLC, the NFL LLC you mentioned the MLB had a similar program. NHL, um, those aren't you're not working directly for teams, correct? They're they're you're working for the league essentially. Yeah, you're working for the league essentially with your responsibilities being for the home team that they got it put you at. Um, but you're also helping out the away team with with things right. that they need because in pretty much every sport they don't travel except for football. Um, they don't travel with their team photographers everywhere. So being able to create, you know, real content in real time um, for their teams and for their social channels is is like the goal. Then the NHL piggybacks off of that because they get the uh, content first. 
So it's a little bit more driven, like you said, to like help funnel content into the NHL, but to assist mm-hmm. with those teams. Okay. So it could be anything as small as shooting a cell phone video, like a, or asking a player to do a selfie video, to um, you know anything as like oh we have an, a um, we have a special request tonight. There's a a person you know somebody's there to drop the first puck and like you need to go out on the ice and get that photo so we can share it like those types of things so um yeah it's more so working for the league but you're you're essentially helping the home and away teams how can someone get involved in that with those groups or or those entities yeah so getting involved with the lcc programs with the mlb nfl nhl i don't know if nba does it they might i'm not sure but um yeah i i i you can find job listings on mlb advanced media like their their job positions um usually during uh right after the turn of the new year for mlb stuff but um they kind of they kind of find you it sounds weird, but, um, they, they have their ear, you know, ear to the ground and, and finger on the pulse of, of like, who's a creative out there. Who's, who's kind of, um, young and up and coming. Cause it's typically a, a younger age group in those, in those, um, those circles they are usually between like right out of college to 26, 27. And, and then they, you typically, you, you get a, seems to me you get an opportunity, uh, within those organizations because now they've, trust you and you have opportunities and different things like that but getting involved i mean there's there's uh, i know pretty much everybody who's who runs that kind of stuff uh rebecca friedman she is the nhl lcc uh man like coordinator um casey evans and lucas stevenson they're big with mlb lcc stuff um nfl is russell simon cody slusher sam I'm a, I'm gonna butcher her last name. Some Sam uh, Stanjic. Um, they're they're great. All great people. Um, I've had a pleasure of working with all of them, and um, you know those are the type. Those are the people you you should uh, connect with if you're trying to look for a job in in that way because they all need help. They all need backups too. Like it's mm-hmm. not just you. You're lucky enough to get a job with that one team, and so they look for some people who are replacements who can fill in on different things because most of them. Most of the of the uh, people who work with MLB also works with NHL because most of the teams are really close. So, um, if you get if you're lucky enough to get in there, um, you know, just don't take it for granted. Work your ass off, and uh, you'll probably work in for a, a sports team at some point. <laughs> cool. That's a great little uh, little advice on on how to get in there and get your foot in the door. Uh, it sounds like. So, want to ask you though uh, more about kind of your style and stuff like that. Uh, as you were developing, I mean, you said you wanted to develop your own style. You didn't want to copy anybody else. But were there people that you looked up to that you kind of not necessarily tried to replicate, but drew inspiration from? Yeah, I um, I I kind of came into it in a weird time where it was a transition. I think more more so in the last like two three years, there's been mm-hmm. a transition from like newspaper style shooters, which are just newspaper style like probably between the ages of 50 and older and then this photojournalistic like content creator style that we now kind of have all all over social so being that i worked for the ranch Pokemon quakes they're affiliate of the dodgers so john sue who most photographers will know who that is he's legendary photographer for the dodgers been there for like 40 plus years he worked with andrew bernstein bernstein is like the godfather of of basketball photography, which I'm sure you know, but um, learning from the from them that uh, picking his brain in, in in you know dugout camera wells for the last however long I've been here and being able to chat with him about like what he looks for and like you know different things like that because he does not edit like any of his photos like they how they come out of camera is what you get and they're usually like super impactful so that was the biggest thing he's like. You, you guys are spoiled because you didn't have to work, use film because you had to make it count. Because if you missed it, like that's it. You can't throw it away. That's the film. That's it. So making sure that, you know, yeah, there's times where we just slam the shutter and hope that we, you know, spray and pray, we call it. But yep. there's other times where, like, you can be very precise 
and making sure that you're razor focused every time that you're shooting or in an opportunity. So John Suhu is probably up there in terms of my influences on uh, what I try and do. And then there's a handful, there's a handful of other guys who contribute a little bit to my style, like Jason Hanna with Kansas city Royals. He's a big, big guy in there too. Really great guy. Um, Alex DeHaan with the Astros, his style is very unique and out of the box. Really looks for like a lot of like that dramatic light that we, I talked about before. He's 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 a master at that. And so you got you got photographers that I look up to and and draw from all over the place. Those are just a few that I can remember right now off in the spot. So cool. Oh, that's great. I mean, I'm definitely going to, you know, look those guys up if I'm not already familiar with them and, uh, and reference them, you know, put links to those guys in the show notes. So everyone who's, who's listening can, can check them out too. Uh, what about specific resources that you use tools, whether it's online education, YouTube channels, anything like that, blogs that, that you, uh, that you use to improve yourself, get better. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big person on experience outweighs some of those things i mean learning new new things especially right now in this time where we have all this time on our hands like i've dove into like after effects and trying to figure out something else because now my position kind of calls for something different with the pirates i'm technically a content producer so i'm having to do more video and learning more of the graphic based motion graphic stuff so um you know taking time to like learn those things but when it comes to um photography i mean i i talk to guys all the time if they have a certain shot that they did and i don't i can't figure it out in my head i reach out and just ask like hey how'd you do that and then i start working on it myself or trying to replicate it in a way not to make it exactly the same but to adapt it to my style and how i shoot yep. and what i what yep. i do with the camera so um you know just just being able to um analyze yourself analyze your own your own work um to see where you can adjust and work and fix or not fix but improve on um that that right now is a perfect time to kind of do that yeah yeah definitely i mean the whole creative inspiration i mean that's what this industry is about that's what it's built on that's why it keeps growing everything we're seeing just keeps getting better and better. And people are coming out with new things seemingly every single day. Um, it's just because you see something someone else does and you put your own twist on it. Um, and I love that. I mean, I love that. And once I figured that out, I think I started to grow tremendously, you know, from, from being stubborn and as, you know, as I was younger and trying to just do everything on my own and my way and not, you know, look at anybody else or compare myself to somebody else. I think, you know, comparing is the worst thing you can do. You just, you know, take what somebody else has done and put your own creative spin on it. Um, Absolutely, man. I think everybody kind of goes through that until it, it takes a few, it takes a few years to like mm -hmm. understand that process. And, and it's, I think it, it comes from the word patience, like knowing that, um, you know, that, that guy or that girl, like they got to where they're at because of their experiences and, and like everybody's trying to get there as fast as they possibly can. But like, the process is like, is what's worth it. Like that's, what's yeah. going to get you there, you know? So having kind of had that click, like, like yourself, like that happened with me a couple, like a year or two ago was like, why is no one hiring me? Like, why can't I get a full-time job? Like, you know, and then just going, Nope, it's not because I'm not good enough. It's not because I'm not working hard enough. It's just because it's not the right time. Like mm -hmm. just figuring that out and like being at peace with it and learning patience has like been like a turning point in like my happiness as a photographer period. Okay. So big, big point. I wanted to hit home with you because I think we shot a basketball tour. You shot a basketball tournament that had like third grade girls to like high school boys. It was everything. And we had you going to everything, but yep. you weren't above it, even though you were doing NHL stuff, NFL stuff. I mean, you know, you had a charger shoot the next day or something like that. Um, can you touch on that? Like why you've just never been too big for a job? Well, I, I, it goes back to trying to fill my calendar. Like it's not necessarily like I'm just trying to throw like little things here and there, but I'm, I'm trying to build on, okay, I know that this opportunity leads to the next thing and right. this so on and so forth. And so it, it's, it's not trying to be above anything, even though, like you said, like I've shot, 
you know, divisional championship games and like MLB and like different stuff like that. I haven't been lucky enough to shoot any like big name, like big game stuff like Super Bowl or like that stuff yet in my career. Hope to soon. But even just shooting like a, a, we, we lost a recent photographer, Anthony Fauci, um, to COVID-19 like a couple weeks ago. And I met him once. And the one thing that he told me was that re hit home the previous point was like, be patient, like you're good enough, your skill set's going to get there. But the other thing he did, he shot more people in the stands and went up to them and gave them photos than he did of the players on the field. So like those little payback moments too, like to give back to other things. Like if I take a great photo of a third grade basketball player, like their parents are going to be over the moon. So Mm -hmm. like, yes, I want to get up here and have the great shot of Mike Trout catching, you know, taking a home run away or hitting the game winning home run or whatever. But I still have to practice my craft. And what better place to do that is in a low light gym Mm -hmm. in San Diego (laughs) shooting 60, you know, 60 games or whatever it was over that course of that time. So I, I just love those opportunities. I relish those. I think those are the bread and butter of like what we do. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, man. Yeah. there's value in every opportunity. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so we talked a little bit about the people that have kind of gotten inspiration from. Are there any specific accounts you can throw out there that, you know, you really like, or whether it's a team account, <laughs> Pittsburgh uh, Pirates, <clears throat> <like that>. uh, <laughs> you're going to be biased a little bit now. Yeah, yeah. No, I, um, I really like having now been like keeping track with Pittsburgh and stuff. Like what the penguins do is really cool. Um, they got a really great group of um graphic designers in there and, and social media people like sydney blackman and uh daryl daryl hill yes daryl hill um he's a graphic designer with them and and um i definitely like what the what the penguins are doing um other recent ones i would say it's a lot of baseball right now just because like that's just what i've been looking at right. um let's see if i can think of any oh Bottom top of the line on my head is the Chargers um, social channels are are yeah. killer. Like if you uh, aren't a fan of the Chargers, just go on their social channels. You'll become a fan of the Chargers. But unless you're from San uh, Diego, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> unless unless you're a little biased and you're a little salty, I understand. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, just I, I've kind of taken a few little things here and there that I'm kind of applying with with the Pirates as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very tapped into like. Um, pop culture right now and like using you know those different like memes and and different like things that are very relatable that everybody uses that you don't even have to be a sports fan to like go to it and be like oh all right i know i've seen that tiktok before or Mm -hmm. whatever it may be so um trying to kind of adapt a little bit of everything because we're kind of moving into a new direction especially with me coming on with the pirates of like we're trying to amp everything up to make it really uh a feel bigger than we have we only got four people on our our staff right now um you know so it's it's a lot of a lot of you know double duty and working around with different things so like you said i'm be a little, i'm a little biased the pirates but um i mean the royals are great um the seahawks are typically really well really well ran um there's 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 a lot of great content out there right now and it it's because of the times you kind of feel a little sa- it feels a little saturated just cuz we're all right. sitting at at home on our phones but you'll go through some stuff and there's some stuff that you're like wow people yeah. have taken a really long time to do this or like really like crit- like you know polished it and that's the i think the um the great thing about this is that you're c- getting a ton of amazing content that has been that hasn't needed to be rushed. Like right. it's been like, we're going to like make sure that this is perfect before we put it out. And that, for me, that, that makes all the difference. Right on. So want to do, I don't have to call it rapid fire, but I just sure. want to get a little bit like of specific advice for, sh- for we'll talk photography for covering or shooting um, that particular sport. I mean, you mentioned before that it's you know important that you have knowledge of that sport, but um, just some, some tips you have of covering since you've covered a few and I just want to throw out a sport and you can give a couple, you know, whether it's one or, or anything that you can think comes to mind on, on a piece of advice for covering that sh- sport. Um, so we can start off with baseball since that's, you know, what you're doing right now. Sure. Yeah. It's uh positioning. 
100 okay. percent positioning and then baseball is long it's a long season it's a grind so like if you're if you're a photographer shooting baseball all the time um the the greatest part about it is to try and look at it in different ways as many times as you can because you're going to be in that camera well you're going to just be shooting the same thing over and over and over again and so being able to figure out um that the dugout can be done for a portrait shoot it can be used to make really really cool images of players and and those types of things but definitely baseball would be figure out how to shoot it a different way as many times as you can and positioning i think those go hand in hand positioning you mean just moving moving around the ballpark yeah, but like, doing it strategically like trying to create something that's different than everybody else i mean right. my biggest thing that i try and um, touch on in in most of the shoots that i do and i kind of look like probably look like a chicken running with my head cut off my half the time is i'm trying to get as many different angles and different shots as possible because if you got three three or four camp camera guys next to you photographers next to you we're all pretty much having the same shot more or less and so if you're shooting for a team or in my case i was shooting you know like we had talked about lcc stuff mlb that mm-hmm. kind of thing I'm trying to give them something that they don't have, that they haven't. They Their team photographer can't leave his spot to go or her spot to go get this angle. So I'm trying to just position myself in a way that's interesting to catch a moment that normally wouldn't you wouldn't normally get. Yeah. Okay, football. Football, the, the first rule I learned – is be um, 10 yards ahead of a bad team and 25 yards ahead of a, of a good team. Because you're you're anticipating the long pass, you're anticipating the long run. A bad team's typically going to have more defensive, there's going to be more defensive plays. Um, but it's the same thing. I, I kind of adapt the position side to it. I think so you're that. saying 10, 10 to 25 yards, you're meaning so you know, from 10 the yards line, from the line of scrimmage? From the, yeah. yeah, from the line of scrimmage, 10 yards ahead. And then okay. on a great team or a good team, 25 right. yards ahead. So, okay. um, makes sense. Those, those, I, I think they're kind of self explanatory, but, mm-hmm. um, it's the same thing. Like, I, I just try and really like hammer home that you're trying to make as many like you different angles as possible, be a little different. So, and then the one that I'm probably most curious about is hockey. Hockey, you can't really do much about it than whatever camera hole you are assigned to. So um, it, it some some days you get a lot of stuff, some days you get nothing. And um, just being able to try and create something out of nothing is 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 hard because a lot of times, like like I said, like if all the goals happen on the opposite end, you're kind of out of luck. But it's how can you tell that story or where can you move? Again, there's positions too that you can move where it's a little higher. But um, if you're in a camera hole, like you, you got to figure out some way to make some images. So maybe you start shooting more defensive and you start shooting more goalie saves and and those types of things. But it's, it goes back to like my my thought process on it anyway. Like if I can't make images of the home team that I'm shooting for, if I go to the away team, like I feel like I did something, even though that those aren't going to be used. So it's not, it's not like go away from your assignment, but you gotta, you gotta keep, you gotta keep the creative wheels going the whole time. And you don't want to frustrate yourself so that when that moment does happen, you, you miss it. Yeah. I want to go through a couple questions that I kind of ask, um, you know, most of the guests just to get everyone's different opinions, um, in the industry. Um, so what's your advice looking to people for people advice to people looking to get into your role? We'll, we'll call it with the pirates. Yeah, I would, um, email, 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 email people, like ask the question. Like you, like I said, you don't, if you don't ask, you don't get, I, I, I'm not hammered again. Like no is not a no direct definite. It's not right now. Like make sure that, um, when the opportunity does come up, like you're ready, like you have your portfolio in order, um, your availability is in order or can be put in order. Like just, just put it out. And I'm a, like, you put it out in the universe. Like usually the universe kind of like gives it back in a way. So, um, yeah, I, I think just, just connect, trying to connect with as many people in the, in their position as possible and ask them those same questions of like how you get to where you're at, um, is huge. Like they're, they're, 
people want to talk about themselves. It's like this is a perfect example. I probably have talked really fast during this, but um, yeah, they 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 want to tell their story. They want to figure out or, or tell you how they got there to help you figure right. out your journey. So just connect with as many people as you can. Yeah, I mean that's one of the reasons I'm loving doing this because you know most of us usually aren't the ones giving our opinions and getting to talk about what we do. So it's cool getting to hear everybody's uh, everybody's story and the passion come out in everyone's um, you know voices when they when they get to talk about you know what they do and and doing what they love. Yeah, exactly, man. I, I appreciate you having me on and and um, I, I was lucky enough to be able to talk with a, a, a class yesterday at University of West Virginia. There oh, a there couple of the, their uh, their photography class, they're like, they picked me and I was like, uh, you sure? Like, I mean, I'm okay. Like, mm -hmm. but being able to talk with them and, and hear some of the, the passions that they have and kind of pass on what, you know, I've been mm -hmm. talking about today was really cool to see. And I, I, I've been, I've, I, I don't want to say I've took it, taken this, like, this journey for granted, but it, it's, it's just been an eye opening thing when you get messages on Instagram, which have start to become, uh, dude, you inspire me. And like, you push me to the next thing. And I'm just like, was that photo even worth posting? Like, these are the thoughts that are going right. through my head versus like what the impact is happening. So like, that's such a cool thing that's happening now. And like having this be out there that, you know, these kids or, or anybody in the industry can kind of like start to learn from each other. Like, Hey man, kudos. Yeah. So we've done a lot of looking back at everything that you've done and, and you know, your advice and stuff. What about looking forward? Like what does the career look like? What's the, the big goal, the end goal for you? <laughs> yeah. So the, the dream goal is still intact, um, which is to be a team photographer. Um, so we'll, we'll see what the future holds with the pirates. If, if that's mm -hmm. the way things kind of go, but um, still dream goal is to do that. Like there's big things on the, on the, on the checklist, which is like shoot, shoot the Olympics, shoot a Super Bowl, cover world series, like those types of things. And then my biggest dream goal is to, um, be a, 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 a photographer for Arsenal football club in mm -hmm. London. I'm just putting it out in the universe. And if it wants to happen, it will happen. Great. But go. like doing something like that, that like, you know, I'm not saying it is like, you know, one in a million, but just being like an American kid having to mm -hmm. go over to England and get a job there, which would be like unbelievable. So, yeah. um, but right now I think just, just taking everything day by day under the current conditions. And then once everything gets going and ramped up, it, I haven't really been able to sink my teeth in and like meet everybody at the pirates yet. Cause I'm just still so new and we got shut down. So I'm really looking forward to, getting involved, meeting everybody, you know, just yeah. figuring out the city and uh, starting a new chapter. Yeah. Okay. That brings you to my next question. And we can, if you can just kind of current conditions aside, um, what's your biggest struggle right now? Um, you can call it with your career. Yeah. My biggest struggle I think was not putting enough emphasis on video earlier. Okay. Like I, I did, I did the uh, narrow mindedness on the I want to be a photographer and that's all I'm going to be no matter what. Like no one can tell me any otherwise. But now the position that I ended up getting is photo video. Like that's just how it works, you know. And so the struggle was being able to be comfortable as being called a content creator mm -hmm. and not a photographer. Yeah. And I know that sounds really weird to like say out loud, even to myself, but, um, that was, that was the hardest thing to Vic within myself just to be like, there's an internal struggle going with like, Oh, I want to be identified as this, but really like I have the ability to be this. So, um, once I kind of was like, Nope, I'm a content creator. This is what I do. This is it. Even though like every position I've ever had was like live content creator. I was like, no, I'm a photographer. So mm -hmm. making it, um, you know, my identity is more so becoming a reality for me. And so um, probably, like I said, putting more onus on video and putting more onus on graphics and, and learning those things. Because at the end of the day, like, I want to be able to, to say, I, I don't want to be able to say no to anything. I want to be able to say yes to everything to like, even if I'm decent at it or good, I can help and do different things. So I think 
I think leaning into that content creator role sooner would have been the strug- the less struggle that I have now because I'm having to play go big catch up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that that's a great theme here to kind of wrap this thing up with is as everything that you've touched on and done and you know your career story is is just taking advantage of any opportunity that you can not be too big not be too small um and so that you can versatile um versatize if that's even a word your skill set mm-hmm. uh, is what i'm trying to say here um you know the more things you can learn and, and be good at the more opportunities uh that you're going to be um going to be afforded. And, you know, the way to get good at those things is just by doing them. So, um, just keep taking advantage of, of any gig, uh, any sporting event, whatever that you can, because that's how you're getting. Exactly. Um, getting I, to that I next think level. that's, I think that starts with, um, I had a conversation with Alex DeHaan when I was in a hiring process with him for the Astros, uh, to be a game day, uh, photographer for them. And, um, he was talking about a lot about culture and whether or not like who'd fit in, like based on personality a little bit, but more so of like, are you involved in the culture and in the way that they're trying to adapt that? And I took it really, I, I took it to heart, which was if, if we have a graphic designer who has a video idea, that graphic designer is going to help do the video idea. Mm-hmm. They're not just going to be a graphic designer. Like we're creatives. We're all going to do everything together like collaboration is key. And so that's one big thing that I definitely want to be able to instill or work with or like kind of help build in a way in my new position of like, we already have that. It's just like, how, how do we bring more people in? How do we like work with more people on, on not just being narrow minded like I was before and like build this culture of creatives and and be able to do all these great things together and i think that's the biggest the biggest uh sign of a great creative or a content team on social or whatever else because all everyone's in the same boat and everybody's paddling cool great great stuff to kind of end on there do you have any shout outs real quick before we before we wrap this up <laughs> yeah my boy craig uh milko with the the pirates caitlin Coffold uh with the pirates terry rogers my boss um all those guys um you know i want to i want to shout out um obviously my parents giving birth that whole thing <laughs> and um yeah man i appreciate i appreciate you uh taking the time to to bring me on and, and chat with you and be able to do this i mean i had a great time meeting you um down in san diego where we were doing that event and uh been following along with what hall pass and and yourself have been doing so great cool, job that. look forward to the future for you man thank you um lastly where can people find you let's show you some love yeah um instagram is at josh underscore lavalle it is l-a-v-a-l-l-e-e it is french canadian I am probably the widest combo ever, French, Canadian, and Irish. So thanks, parents, again. Um, but yeah, uh, Josh Valley, uh, Josh underscore Lavalley at, uh, at Instagram, JP underscore L A V S at Twitter. Um, yeah, Pirates Social, all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's either one of two people. It's either me or Craig putting stuff out for you guys to see. And Craig's an all star. So. Um, if you don't follow me, follow Craig, Craig Milko, M-I-L-K-O. Cool. And we'll link to all those uh, in the show notes and descriptions. Awesome, man. Appreciate cool. it. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Wow. There was so much to learn from all the incredible advice Josh threw out in there. Of all the episodes so far, my notes for this one were the longest after going back and re-listening to it. Even though we talked mostly about photography, there are so many parallels between the two mediums. And the more you know about both, the more of an asset you are to your creative team. Thank you again to Josh for coming on and imparting your wisdom. And thank you to our sponsors, Hall Pass Media and Sports Business Classroom. And last, but certainly not least, thank you, the listener, for joining us today. Keep on creating, and I'll see you next week.